Uh, it's been awesome. It's been really exciting that the spring's right around the corner. Uh, everything that we worked for all fall is starting to finally pay out. And uh, really excited to get going. Uh, the competition's been great. Uh, I'd say even more so than the fall. So everybody's taking a step up and getting ready for a big day. Nate mentioned that uh, you surprised him with your ability to run or jump higher. You heard more about you as a pitcher, but what do you feel like your growth in the outfield has come maybe just from when you first arrived at campus to leading up to the I think it's definitely taken a big step. We have a lot of leaders in the outfield. I mean, Matt kringman has been in the outfield for four years at a high level. Paxton Clinton's coming off for a good year. And Chief, Coach Johnson, we have all the tools necessary to really elevate your game. And this is the place to do it if you want to elevate your game. Do you view yourself as a hitter first or a pitcher first? Uh, I view myself as a competitor. So whatever it takes to get me on the field, whether that's going to be on the offensive or defensive side of the ball, I'm going to do it, whatever helps our team win. Was there a side of the ball that you were more primary on in high school? Um, I will say when I got when I went to the draft combine and there was talk about draft, it was more on the side of the pitcher. But I think ever since I've been here, the clear role for this year has been more on the offensive side. Is that clear definition really allowed you to kind of hold in and focus on the hitting and fielding aspect, maybe more than just kind of it being more broad? Over? Well, I wouldn't say it's been broad or really focused. There's been a high focus on bettering myself in every way, whether that's starting with Coach Yeski or taking extra swings with Chief, and really anything I can do to elevate the game, get on the field, help the team win. That's been the main focus. Is that a surprise for you at all that they, you know, pegged you more as a hitter first when you first showed up here? I'd say a little bit, but I think that's a testament to the staff that we have to be able to really bring out the best out of everybody. Have you learned some little things with the other pitchers? Have you spent a decent oh, amount of time with them? Yes, for sure. I mean, whether it's talking to Thatcher and Gage, guys that are really advanced in analytics, uh, learning more about the numbers, say what my fastball should look like, or whether it's talking with Coach Yeski and just getting behind the middle side of things. Uh, I think he really excels at that. He excels at bringing a competitive nature to the mound and all the mental side of the game that you need to be successful. Coach Yeski's great at that. What are some of those analytics that you learned from them? I've learned the big importance of like induced vertical break, which is the ride that you'll get on the fastball, where a lot of guys like Gage and Thatcher both have really good induced vertical. So that's going to allow their fastballs to play up in the zone and get swings under the barrel, just like Typhoid against Florida. So I, how, are, are you throwing much as a pitcher at all? Like, what's sort of your routine with that thing? I've still been throwing bullpens, and all of my catch play is oriented around pitching, so that if the time comes where I'm needed in the game, I'll be ready. How how's the strength staff, uh, Isaac and Jeremy, sort of been able to manage all of this workload for you? Uh, I think they've done a great job because it is a lot on the body, but I mean we have access to all the best resources, the best nutrition. Coach Max and Animal in the weight room, he knows exactly what to do based on how long the practices have been, and then Isaac's always there whenever I need. Because they still use you, still kind of need to pace yourself a little bit because again, you're trying to play both sides of the ball. Right, right. no doubt, yeah. And with it being a long season, that's why having Isaac is so important. He's a guy that really, anytime I do something, it doesn't matter how early, how late it is, he's there and he has our back. What have you seen from Michael Braswell at short? Uh, I think being here as a freshman, it was really eye opening to watch a guy like Braswell play shortstop just because it's a level that I haven't seen before. And I think. He's very mature out there. I think he takes really competitive at bats. I think he's taking some of the best at bats on the team, both fall and spring. And he's going to be a gamer. He's going to be really good for us. As a hitter, what are some things you're trying to work on? Uh, really, just controlling the strike zone. That's what we talk about most of the time. Is not swinging at pitches out of the zone. Uh, being really good with two strikes. So, say if it's not a pitch that I can hit hard, but it's in the strike zone, less than two strikes, I can take it and capitalize on mistakes. Has that been a tough adjustment for you against SEC pitching at all? Is that a new concept for you? Uh, definitely. It was eye-opening when I got here just because I had never seen guys throw in close to 100 miles an hour before. So by the time I got here, just a lot of swing to cheat with Johnson and working on all that. Pitching, so it's really helpful. How's the versatility maybe made it tough for you in these inter-squad scrimmages to uh, get hits? And, you know, it's been tough because I think our pitching staff is the best in the country, and that's props to those guys in Coach Yeski. Uh, everybody has something that they're good at, and everybody has a way to get you out. And I think that's what's going to make us so strong this year is as good as our hitters are and as good as the coaches and 
chief and Coach Johnson prep our swing. The pitching staff is elite. I don't think you'll find it anywhere better in the country just because there's a guy for every single role. Anything you need on this team, we have a guy. How do you think you and some other freshmen are adjusting to the speed of the game? I don't think the speed of the game is much of an issue. I think we do a lot of work on breathing and imagery and visualization. So that's something that we take a lot of time out of our day for. Like before every practice, we meet together and we have a goal setting triad where it's you and two other guys. And we talk about like what we're going to focus on. So that way you can keep reminding yourself so that you don't let the game speed up on you. Who sort of sets that up? That was done by a mix of Coach Johnson, uh, Carlene, our mental coach, and then like guys like him and Alex who decided this is something we're going to do before every practice. I guess what aspects of the game has that specifically helped you in that? Mainly the mental side. Uh, we have long practices and it's a long season, so if you can remind yourself to stay in the moment and to focus on one thing at a time and not kind of get a crowded mental space, that's how you're going to perform the best. Um, obviously all of this is very difficult, but you're making it kind of look easy. What's, what, what's Basically what I'm asking is what's been sort of the secret to your success so far? Uh, really, like I said, just keeping it one pitch at a time. Uh, I think a lot of freshmen, when they come into school, the problem really nationwide is the speed of the game. It's a, I think it's the biggest adjustment you'll make in a baseball career. So just reminding yourself that you're here for a reason. You know, There's eight other guys on the field with you that want this just as bad as you do. And it's just taking it one pitch at a time. Is there a veteran who's helped you particularly a, a lot or the most or you know, guys who sort of stood out on that side? For sure. I spent a lot of time talking to Paxton just because he made the jump last year. And he was a guy that came in, played right away, and also have a locker right next to him. So it, it's really been easy to talk to him. You being one of the younger guys coming in, do you give Hayden and Alex a little help for being older? <laughs> um, yes and no. Uh, yes, because they are older, and no, because I don't know if you've seen Hayden's picture on the scoreboard, but uh, that's not a guy whose bad side you want to get on. <laughs> <laughs> he said that y'all taught him some lingo and stuff. Do you have anything specific? Uh, no, I mean, we really talked to him about just how he's old and he can't keep up with the young generation. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say as much slang as like just giving him a hard time, you know, like asking him how his knees are every day, <laughs> little stuff like that. If you can think back to the first time you had to hit against uh, Thatcher or Gage, what was going through your head maybe after that first pitch came through? Well, before the at bat, I, I didn't really think much of it. I was just trying to lock in and be prepared for the moment. And then the first pitch that I saw from Thatcher, I was like, all right, we're in Alex Buck Stadium now. This is a uh, this is what it looks like. This is what the big stage is like. And from then on, I've just been excited. Same thing with Gage. Yeah, for sure. I mean, these are two elite arms that you don't see every now and then. And you've been able to handle left-handed pitching pretty uh, well, at least the court. Coach Johnson, that's sort of the secret to, to, I guess, handling that as a lefty. Well, I don't try to think of it as left-handed or right-handed pitching. I try to think of it as me finding my pitch to hit. And I don't think which arm it's coming from matters. I think knowing what my strengths are and knowing what I can handle the ankles, so the ankles don't bother you at all. No, it's, it's just I'm looking for the ball to be where I want it. That's, I try to keep it simple to see ball to ball. Being from Louisiana, does it mean anything special to you in the It's awesome. Uh, all fall, really, every time I'd step on the field, it was like a rush of adrenaline. And now that we got into our spring practices and scrimmages and we're wearing the actual LSU jerseys, it's like you walk on the field and you take a deep breath. It's like you get to soak it all in for the first time. It's awesome. Did you have anything special for Mario? No, uh, I believe we'll be practicing, so <laughs> I'll be here working. Jay mentioned uh, for freshmen, just for you know, any level, the pressure of opening day wanting to make that good impression is obviously kind of key and sometimes deter players. How do you approach that? Obviously, the excitement of kind of uh, coming up for the first time in a real game. Really, that's all it is, is excitement. I don't really believe I'm trying to make an impression because we like to focus on working from the inside out and not really worrying about what the outside sources are saying or pressure from the fans because it'll only get to you if you let it. Like, I mean, there could be 13,000 people in the stands, but there's only 18 on the field. So I try to keep, the, keep that in mind and know that after all, I'm just playing a game that I love to play. Where does that come from? Maybe the family aspect of, of, of that or the coaches just kind of implementing 
pretty much all of it. Both of my parents were college athletes, so they've been able to talk to me growing up, even when I was in high school, about knowing what was to come. And Coach Johnson's really big on it. Uh, we've had a lot of meetings with guys such as Dean. He's our group guy that really helped us bring the team together. Carly is a great mental coach. And it's just everybody knowing that it's us versus the other team, nothing else matters.